Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back with another episode of One Take Testing, the show in which I aim to show off a deck, give you a sense of how it plays, and let you know my thoughts all in one singular take. We're still on take one, right chat? Anyway, today we are looking at Adventure Plunder Patrol. This is a list that I plundered from Kota, who got top 8 in the most recent Chalice Slime Monthly, and this is a deck you are going to have to familiarize yourself with. Gone are the days of Plunder picking up free wins because no one's actually read their cards. Both Kota and the Captain had high-tier finishes this weekend, with both of them taking unbelievable names with this list. It turns out that the Adventure stuff synergizes super, super well with the Plunder Patrols specifically. It's a deck that can absolutely make use of an additional card in hand via Draco back, a uh, monster summoned to their side of the field that performs an Omni Negate before they Xeno lock themselves with something like Golden Hair, and there's a couple incidental synergies with stuff like Draco back that really make the list worth playing. But honestly, I just want to play Plunder again. I will take literally any opportunity to jam this deck that I can, and under no circumstances will you ever be free from my incessant plundering. I'd be playing this in paper if... The adventure stuff wasn't $400. Anyway, here are the cards. We've got Triple White Beard, Triple Red Beard, Triple Black Eyes, uh, Triple Blue Beard, Triple Golden Hair, Triple Aquamancer of the Sanctuary, One Wandering Griffin Rider, Triple Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. This is just like the least worst hand trap. Uh, three Rite of Aramisir, One Draco Back the Dragon Steed, One Journey of Destiny, Foolish Burial Called by the Grave, Triple Forbidden Droplet, Triple Plunder Patrol Shipyard, One Terraforming, Triple Infip, and One Plunder Patrol Booty. A lot of little differences between previous ones um, and this one. For instance, Booty is no longer a must play because you no longer have to run up against decks like VW that can sit under Earth and Wind. Instead, people are all jamming 12 hand traps and as a result you always have access to your very powerful extra deck monsters like Lys. We've also got Brandon here, a Bahamut Shark, Double Mowork, Totally Awesome, Access Code, Unicorn, and Halka Fibrax. These are the only changes from Coda's list. This was originally a Dragite, a White Aura Whale, and a Geonator Transverser, Triple Blackbeard, the Blunder Patrol Captain, and one Salaman Great Almirage. So, ah. This is not ideal. So we can go Journey of Destiny here. Normal Summon a Redbeard. We can trigger the Journey of Destiny. We'll grab the Draco back. We'll take it to our hand. Now that we have Hitch Fodder, we can activate the Journey of Destiny. We will grab Aquamancer. We'll send the Aquamancer to the graveyard. We can activate Aquamancer. Grab ourselves right. Right effect. Grab the token. Um, This is a little crusty. So we still have access to the Omni Negate because hilariously, Wandering Griffin Rider is a quick effect and when our opponent commits to a normal or special, we can trigger Journey of Destiny on their turn. But for now, I think all we're going to go for is uh, Salaman Great Almirage on Redbeard. Uh, we will trigger the Black Eyes, uh, getting the Redbeard back to our grip. And then, you know, very normal turn one setup. Uh, we're just going to make Blackbeard pass. Uh, we're going to set Forbidden Droplet. Uh, we're going to activate Draco back. And, I mean, if they have Nibiru, we are going to lose. Woo! Simple as that. Now, many of you may not know this, but Blackbeard Pass is an FTK. Oh, they're thinking. Onomatopera. Well, as much as I want to let this resolve... Oh, please send a light. Oh, gosh. Golly gosh, dang gee willikers, please send a delight. Okay, this is like the tastiest ash blossom in the universe, so I will be activating it here. Why activate the Draco back? It's funny, I think. Uh, reveal the Utopia. Okay, so this is now a light. Uh, with that, we're going to go for the Blackbeard. I uh, will go into lists. Did I just completely lie to you all about Journey of Destiny? No, the second effect is the one that triggers on our opponent's turn. Gosh, I'm being exceptionally dumb here. 
Yes, yep, yes, yep, yes, yep. Okay, all right. We all know I don't read. Okay, so this card can't be destroyed by my card effects, but it can be negated. Uh, we would be preventing the Zexal weapon search here. I think that's completely fine. A tornado bringer all you like, buddy. They haven't committed to a normal yet. Alright, Utopia Double is going to fiend out the Forbidden Droplet. Oh, we'll send the Draco back here. And then we'll add the Draco back back. It's so funny. One of the big weaknesses of Plunder is just the fact that uh, you have to cycle through so much so frequently. Uh, you often don't get a chance... Uh, to refill your hand. And cards like Draco back just being a free card you can pitch and then add back, a Metal Foes fusion of sorts, is just crazy. It's out of this world strong. Uh, we could summon the Black Beard back, but I think I actually want to summon the Red Beard. Uh, uh, no, they're all lights. Uh, we don't actually have another fun thing to go into. Yeah, so instead we'll just, we'll just pass here. Okay. Uh, now they might have Numbers Protection, which is a little bit of an issue. Uh, and that Utopia Double is a quick effect, so they could theoretically go into something like a um, uh, the Utopia Dragonar on our turn and then trigger it. That would be a little bit of a problem. Okay, they're going to let the journey resolve. We're going to take the Griffin Rider here. Uh, I'm going to pitch the Red Beard. I oh, will trigger the Red Beard. We're going to equip it to the list. So that if they go for the Utopia double effect in a chain that is not right now, we can at least cycle. Okay, they're going for it. Um, How much do I care about this? I think the answer is at least a little. No, let's see what they're up to. Because it can't be Dragonar, there's only one material. I know the two cards in hand are uh, Yep Double and the ZW Tornado Bringer. I don't think there's a really good thing you can activate here. Prime? Well, Prime is fine. Uh, they need to have way less life points than this to trigger Prime. It is Leo Utopia Ray. Okay, so that's not going to accomplish anything for them. Uh, we'll activate Wandering Griffin Rider here. And they're thinking. That's got to be numbers protection. I can't imagine that it isn't. Numbers protection is a big problem for us also because, like, we can't negate it with the Wandering Griffin Rider. All right, let's try to uh, bounce the Leo Utopia Ray. Infip. Oh, that is interesting. Infip targeting the Liss is kind of a problem. I am actually going to Wandering Griffin Rider this. It is numbers protection. Yeah. Okay. All right. You have done it. Uh, you have outed this board. Unfortunately, I do have the capacity to do more. So we're going to target the uh, Plunder Patrol Ship Captain. We're going to summon the second list. Oh my god. That's the best draw on our deck. It is actually the best draw on our deck. Uh, unless we normal summon the Ravenwing like a fucking idiot, in which case it's terrible. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, let's just go... Okay, we, we can still make this work. Uh, let's just go... Plunder Patrol ship list. Summon out the Blackbeard. Uh, Blackbeard. And list into Unicorn. Uh, oh, we could even trigger the Unicorn. Is that funnier? Two, four, six, eight. It's also lethal. Yeah, we'll trigger the Unicorn pitching... Uh, White beard here. Whee. And we'll trigger the white beard. Grab ourselves a uh, golden hair. And then we'll go 
these two into Bran. Uh, we will trigger Black Eyes as well. What the hell? To summon Redbeard? Yeah, let's go. Combat. <laughs> All right, it was a little crusty, but we did get there. Like a little was a little bit of an understatement. This was exceptionally crusty. So that's Adventure Plunder Patrol. It plays functionally identically to Plunder Patrol, especially if you're an idiot who hasn't read the adventure cards. That said, this does suffer from the same problem that old Plunder Patrol did, which is that it's a very difficult deck to pilot optimally. There's a reason that this deck doesn't have a ton of YCS tops, but the tops it does have all pretty much come from the same person. You kind of have to know what you are doing, and frequently, I do not. <laughs> that is why I played this particularly suboptimally, but I hope that with practice I can become better. Um, it's also a very punishing deck. If you mess up a very small minutia of a sentence that occurs in some microsecond of one of these monsters' effect texts, then you are accidentally locking yourself, or uh, up the creek without a paddle, or your effects are no longer quick, or you're out of material. Uh, that said, the Brave Engine makes it a lot more forgiving. Things like Dracoback being able to cycle a bunch of times in one turn, uh, being able to be a discard for something like a Golden Hair and then immediately setting itself again for activation with a Forbidden Droplet or the like, uh, gives you a lot more leeway than the deck used to have. Um, I look forward to this becoming a serious meta contender, and I think that if you are aiming to enter a YCS or anything over a Locals at this point, you should probably at minimum familiarize yourself with what the Plunder Patrol monsters do. Thank you.